some of the simplest questions, some of the most mundane sounding questions actually get, allow you to, to go to the heart of the theory in the sense that in order to explain something very, very, very simple, you need to understand quantum mechanics. And one is this uh, question, which seems ridiculous, which is why don't we fall through the floor? Why don't I fall through this chair? And, and, and you know, if you ask uh, anyone that, they'd say, well, because it's solid. But it is true, of course, that uh, from Rutherford, when Rutherford discovered the atomic nucleus back in Manchester, um, just about a century ago, actually, almost exactly a century ago, yeah. they found that, that all, the mass, all the mass is in some tiny point. And if we, if we imagine, that's called the atomic nucleus, and if we imagine in this room that, that I suppose this thing is about a grain of sand with all the masses, then the atom would be about as big as this room. It would be huge, huge Something space. like that, so, yeah. so, so, so essentially matter is completely yeah. empty, give or take. There is a big clue that that's true. Mm. There is a really big clue that, 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 uh, that, that indicates to us that actually everything is empty and it's the glass <clears> that surrounds us here. Mm. I mean, it, it's rather, I mean, the, the fact that we can see through glass is not some miracle of glass. It's, it's, should, it's rather the other way around. <laughs> exactly. Why can't we see through everything, <laughs> yeah. right? Because yeah. there's nothing there. <clears throat> So uh, 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 glass is closer to this kind of natural, the natural way that we should be thinking about things, except that it's hard and solid. Well, so we, we were actually sat that? on it. Yeah. So actually, quite interestingly, when you say, why don't we fall through the floor, it's very interesting here because we're sat on something that you can see through yeah. <laughs> and we're not falling through it. Yeah, so the light is just streaming through it and because it's empty space. Mm. So because it's empty space and light can stream through it, why doesn't the, f the chair go through it, mm. especially given that the chair is largely empty space too? Yeah. yeah, but my favourite bit of the book, uh, for me, I would say, is the last chapter because we bring everything together, and, and and we say, well, what's the, you know, how far can you take this, right? What happens? What, what's the what's the biggest blob of stuff you can have that doesn't just collapse under its own gravity? And it's a very famous calculation, isn't it? It's called the Chandrasekhar limit, um, and it, it turns out that. So you can, you can ask that question. You wouldn't need to know anything about astrophysics or anything. It turns out it's a star-sized blob of stuff. It turns out you can take a blob of stuff with a mass about one and just, well, 1.4 times the mass of the sun. So almost one and a half times the mass of our sun. And you can turn off all the nuclear reactions in the middle, which is the thing that holds our Which sun is what happens moment. when a, a, yeah. a star runs out of nuclear yeah. fuel. So you can switch it off. Say, I've got a thing the size of our sun, let's say. Um, what, can it, what's going to happen? Well, its gravity is going to squash it and squash it. It's going to collapse, collapse, collapse. Huge amounts of gravity, uh, gravitational force squashing it together. What stops it? Well, it's this. It's this very simple thing, the same thing that's stopping us falling through the floor. And it's able to stop something just under one and a half times the mass of the sun from collapsing. And I, and I love it that we calculate that number. 1.4 solar masses, the maximum mass of a blob of stuff that can be held up by the, by the, 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 the predisposition yeah. for electrons not to want to be on top of each other. Basically. Yeah, I, I did this calculation with my undergraduates in Manchester and it was, was really appropriate that we, the, we, we, the lectures were in a, a lecture theatre underground, subterranean lecture theatre, so we couldn't see the sky. Mm. So I started the lecture course, went through several lectures later and we'd established that stars exist uh, we'd never looked at the sky. Stars exist, and that the maximum mass of a star should be 1.4 solar masses, because we understand the <coughs> earliest of, of a dead one, of a dead star. Yeah, mm. and, uh, yeah. And, and and you know you could imagine you go out to the lecture theatre as I used to tell it to my students. Go out to the lecture theatre and look up now. The sky is full of these things, yeah. and none of them have got a mass bigger than 1.4 times the mass of the sun. Mm. It's just mm. just fantastic. Mm.